It was just over two months ago that Milwaukee announced the highly anticipated Gen 2 version of their 5 and 3 8 compact size circular saw. So it's just starting to roll out in the stores right now, so I have it here to demonstrate for you guys and show you what it looks like and how it performs. So let's go. So when you open up the box right here, everything is included in this tool bag right here. So just so you know, I'm personally not going to store it in this right here. I have a pack out that I'm going to put it in. So stay tuned for later on in the video. I'll show you which one that I choose. So right away, I have a question for you. If you had this saw right here, would you store it in the bag or in a pack out? Let me know down below. All right, we're going to take a quick minute just to see what's inside and go ahead and assemble it. So here it is. Boy, I really like that grip to it. Yeah, that feels really good. All right, right here is a blade that it comes with, five and three eighths. This is a framing blade. And this has 16 teeth. Very thin. And it comes with the M12 charger and the XC 5.0 high output battery. So we're gonna leave it out to start because we're gonna install the blade. And then right in here, I believe this is called a dust port. So I was just looking to see how the dust port attaches. It, this part right here clips on here. And then there's a screw, yeah, that goes in right there. That screw is included in this bag right here. So that way you can hook your hose right up to the back. I like that, it's a good setup. So to start with, we have a nice breeze outside, so I'm not gonna hook this up, but maybe later on the video I will, just so you can see the sawdust collection between using this and not using it. So when you go to install the blade, you have this onboard tool storage right here. But what is in there, good. <laughs> and with the rafter hook right here out of the way. And by the way, it's nice to have a rafter hook. I'd say that's pretty much mandatory on something like this to see that. So I'm glad that's included. Let me see right up here, that's your spindle lock. All right, now I'm just gonna push this down as I tighten it. Just get nice and snug. All right, I'd say that's good. So the only thing I did before making this video is I took this battery out to charge it. So this one is ready to go. There's no indicator on here. So once you put the battery in the tool, let's see, somewhere there's an indicator light. Where is it? Oh, okay, here it is. Since it's so bright and sunny out, it doesn't really jump out at you, but I can clearly see in the daylight right here, it has four bars right there of power, four out of four. All right, take a look, see if you can see those four bars of power when I pull the trigger. You see that? Right away, I'm just noticing this has a really fast break. Watch. Very fast. Boy, you can just feel the power with this thing. Boy, I like that. All right, let's do a couple cuts of this right here. All right, so let's see if this blade is dialed in proper after making that cut. That looks really good to me. Yep, I'm very happy with that. So for some reason it's out of whack a little bit, you can make some adjustments so you can get it right on 90 degree. Happy with that. Okay, we're gonna do a cross cut on a two by 12 right here. This line is a little bit faint. I'm gonna go kind of slow here, let's see how it goes. Right. I like that. That looks good. This saw cut some nice straight lines. See what I mean? So now it's time for us to take a look at the specs on the box. So the blade size, five and three eighths or five and a half. Arbor size, 10 millimeter. The RPM, 3850. The maximum bevel capacity, 50 degrees. Cut line blower, yes. LED light, yes. Length, 11.42 inches. The width, 6.1 inches. The height, 6.87 inches. And the weight with the battery, 5.8 pounds. And this has a five-year tool warranty, three-year on the battery. 
And they show right here it has the power for more demanding cuts, like that 2x12 that I demonstrated just a minute ago. And as I showed you, it has all these items right here in the kit, or you can also get it as a tool only. So whenever I'm reviewing circular saws or track saws, I often get comments, people talking about their preferences, whether it's blade left like this. I'm just gonna use the M18 track saw as an example, and that is blade right. So which one do you prefer, blade left, blade right? Please put your comment down below. So I point out this feature early on, but it's good to see the rafter hook right there. So that just goes over two by four, just like that. And then neatly folds out of the way right there. I like the way that it just curves. Gives you easy access right there for the depth adjustment. So everything on here is very easy to read. But yeah, let's try doing some bevel cuts right here. So to adjust that, it's very easy. And as I mentioned, it goes up to 50 degrees. Let's do a 45. Yeah, that looks straight, not bad. Show you this side right here. Yeah, I'd say that looks pretty good. So when it comes to storing this in a packet, I'll show you which one I'm gonna go with, but I'll also show you a couple of different options that you might wanna know how it fits. All right, so we have the rolling pack out right here. So the bottom one right here is where I tend to keep most of my bigger tools. So like I have the super saws all in there, but this is where I would like to keep this. So this is where I like to keep all the big tools. I might keep a bigger circular saw in there, but for most things, I think I can really get by with this compact size here. So that'll go in there. I'm not sure, I'll have to look into this and see maybe about getting some Kaizen foam so everything's not like banging around against each other as I'm rolling this to the job site. That's my first choice where I'll keep it. And this one right here is the Packout Large Toolbox. So it'd work really well on this too. So it'll definitely work well in there. So yeah, I'm definitely still considering this as my top choice. And then we have this one right here. So I'm actually storing my knife sharpener in this. So yes, well that fits really good in this one right here. That's a good choice. And then there's room for some spare blades. So let me know down below what pack out you would choose to store this in or would you just use a tool bag? Check it out, right here we have three and a half two by fours and we're gonna put this five amp hour battery to the test. I just topped it off in the charger. So here's what my test setup looks like. This workbench right here is fairly solid and I can just slide two by fours in there. I'm just going to come right over here and just start making several cuts, trying to keep them fairly thin. And then when the battery runs out of juice, we're gonna go down here and count, see how many we have. Then right over here, I have my GoPro doing a time-lapse. So this should be interesting. And the reason that I have these right here nailed down is because when I'm pushing on this right here, I don't want that to move much. And this seems pretty solid. And then you can just see how I can easily slide that to feed it over to cut it. Whew. Okay, four bars. So my key to getting the most cuts is to keep that blade nice and straight. Sometimes I might veer off a little bit and that might pinch the blade a little, bog it down. So hopefully after I get about five or so in, I'll get my rhythm down and then we'll just be smooth sailing. But let's see how this works. All right, are you ready? Let's go. Okay, so here's the final results. You can see quite a few cuts right there. Nice pile on one battery. So I did kind of bind the blade a few times by not going straight and maybe didn't have my speed, the tempo down to be the most proficient and get the most cuts. For a 12 amp hour battery to cut a two by four that many times, I'd say that is amazing. Very happy with that. 
So I just kind of all the pieces, put them in this milk crate right here. They all just barely fit without overflowing. So I was able to get 133 cuts on this. So I really didn't think I was gonna be able to get 190 like advertised. And one of the things that probably would have helped, and this is what I should have done, is to use my carpenter square right here. This would ensure a much straighter cut. Check this out. And then probably not just going one after the other. Boom, 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 boom. So I'd say in real work situations, you're going to have to stop a minute, get your tape measure out, get a measurement, and then go ahead, mark it or whatever, and then do your cuts. So what I'm gonna do right now is put this battery on the charger and time how long it takes to fully charge it. And then as I'm editing this video, I'll put the time right over here, how long it takes to charge this. So I'm quite certain if you were building something and only had two batteries and one charger, you would never be waiting for a battery to charge. I'm sure that you're going to stay productive the whole entire day with two batteries and a charger. So there's a couple of specs I wanna point out that weren't on the box. So if you wanna know the maximum cut depth of this right here, so at 45 degrees, it's 1.3 inches. And then at 90 degrees, maximum cut, 1.9 inches. So there's one other thing I was gonna mention that I was gonna show you, and that is putting the dust port on right here and hooking a vacuum up to it and showing you kind of like a before and after with and without it. So you can just see up close how the, much sawdust there is, maybe get a nice slow-mo with a GoPro. But what I'm gonna do is make a YouTube short of that and follow up with that video a few days after this one goes live. So anyways, I hope this video has been helpful for you checking out the Gen 2 version of the 5 and 3 8 circular saw right here. If you like this review, please give it a thumbs up. And I really look forward to your comments down below. So that's it for now, friends. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Hey, Leo, how do you like that circular saw?